Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 148. In heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. And safe is such confiding, for nothing changes here. The storm may roar without me, my heart may low be laid. But God is round about me, and can I be dismayed? Hymn number 148. scriptural this morning will be given by Sharon from New Jersey. Psalms. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainteth in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, 
that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, where he satisfied the longing, the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. <clears throat> they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. <clears throat> Let us have a moment of silent prayer and then follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in, in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And, and lead, lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For, For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. <clears throat> Let us sing hymn number 226. <clears throat> o Lord of life, to thee we lift our hearts in praise for those thy prophets who have shown thy gift of grace that ever grows of truth that spreads from shore to shore, of wisdom's widening ray, of light that shineth more and more unto thy perfect day. Hymn number 226.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We have members and participants from around the world, and you will hear from some of them today. You can find us on our website, plainfieldcs.com, and you can also find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and whatever else comes along on the internet. <laughs> we conduct services every Sunday morning, beginning at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, and we have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healing and lives transformed through the study and practice of Christian science. And you can listen to all of our services, either on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone by a teleconference number that we provide. Also on Sundays at 11 a.m., we have a Sunday school for children of all ages. And that class is also available via teleconference. So if you don't live in the area and you have a child who would like to participate in a Christian Science Sunday School, just contact the church and get the number and your child will be very welcome. <clears throat> and for all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers. So bring the whole family. I would like to... Uh, uh, announce also that a week from this Thursday, December 24th, we will conduct a Christmas Eve service at beginning at 8 p.m. Any of you who would like to join us, you are all welcome. That service will also be broadcast over the website and YouTube for those of you who are unable to join us in person. That's Christmas Eve, December 24th. We will, uh, and next Saturday, we will have another Bible study class. So check the website for study questions, and please join us next Saturday at 10 a.m. We've been printing the January full-text lesson sermon has been printed and is in the mail to subscribers. And we have prepared the table calendar for 2016. And that is available now to order on our website. And we should be able to ship orders before Christmas. So think of them as a wonderful gift for friends and relatives. That's our calendar for 2016. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in the Christian Science Textbook, which attests to the healing power obtained just by reading the Christian Science Textbook. And this morning that reading will be given by Lillian from New Jersey. Page 642, Grateful for Many Blessings. It is with sincere gratitude for the many blessings Christian science has brought me that I give this testimony. I first heard of Christian science about 15 years ago. A friend of mine was taking treatment for physical troubles and was reading the textbook of Christian science, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. The title of the book appealed to me very strongly. I said to my friend, if that is a key to the scriptures, I must have it. I had long been a member of a Bible class in an Orthodox Sabbath school, but I never felt satisfied with that which was taught. There was something lacking, and I did not understand then what it was. I purchased a copy of Science and Health and began to study it. I wish I could express in words what that book brought me. It illumined the Bible with a glorious light, and I began to understand some of the Master's sayings 
and tried to apply them. I had had a longing to live a better Christian life for many years and often wondered why I failed so utterly to understand the Bible. Now I knew it was lack of spiritual apprehension. I did not know at first that people were healed of diseases and sin by simply reading Science and Health, but found after a while that such was the case. At that time, I had many physical troubles, and one after another of these ills simply disappeared, and I found that I had no disease. I was perfectly free. The spiritual uplifting was glorious too, and as I go on in the study of this blessed science, I find I am gaining surely an understanding that helps me to overcome both sin and disease in myself and in others. My faith in good is increased, and I know I am losing my belief in evil as a power equal to good. The pathway is not wearisome because each victory over self gives stronger faith and a more earnest desire to press on. EJR, Toledo, Ohio. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 24 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, God the Preserver of Man. Golden Text Psalms. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. The responsive reading is from Ecclesiastes, Psalms, and Isaiah. There was a little city and few men within it, and there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He, he will, will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot, from the Sabbath, from, from doing thy pleasure on thy holy day, and, and call the Sabbath a delight, the, the holy of, of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Fairly from Maryland, we'll read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Psalms. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. 
Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Nehemiah. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Anani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess Confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commanded thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. So I came to Jerusalem, and said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, And let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month Elo. In fifty and two days, the whole congregation together was forty and two thousand three hundred and three score. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. 
And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Teshetha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet and sent portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it, and our princes, Levites, and priests seal unto it. Psalms. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. Florence from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. God is the life or intelligence which forms and preserves the individuality and identity of animals as well as of men. From the infinite one in Christian science comes one principle and its infinite idea. And with this infinitude come spiritual rules, laws, and their demonstration, which, like the great giver, are the same yesterday and today and forever. The science of mind needs to be understood. Until it is understood, mortals are more or less deprived of truth. Human theories are helpless to make man harmonious or immortal, since he is so already, according to Christian science. Our only need is to know this and reduce to practice the real man's divine principle, love. With one Father, even God, the whole family of man would be brethren. And with one mind, and that God or good, the brotherhood of man would consist of love and truth, and have unity of principle and spiritual power which constitute divine science. The supposed existence of more than one mind was the basic error of idolatry. 
This era assumed the loss of spiritual power, the loss of the spiritual presence of life as infinite truth without an unlikeness, and the loss of love as ever-present and universal. By universal consent, mortal belief has constituted itself a law to bind mortals to sickness, sin, and death. This customary belief is misnamed material law, and the individual who upholds it is mistaken in theory and in practice. The so-called law of mortal mind, conjectural and speculative, is made void by the law of immortal mind, and false law should be trampled underfoot. To suppose that God constitutes laws of inharmony is a mistake. Discords have no support from nature or divine law, however much is said to the contrary. Having faith in the divine principle of health and spiritually understanding God sustains man under all circumstances whereas the lower appeal to the general faith in material means, commonly called nature, must yield to the all might of infinite spirit. Throughout the infinite cycles of eternal existence, spirit and matter neither concur in man nor in the universe. The very doctrines and theories which propose presuppose life and intelligence to exist in matter are so many ancient and modern mythologies. Mystery, miracle, sin and death will disappear when it becomes fairly understood that the divine mind controls man and man has no mind but God. In Egypt, It was mind which saved the Israelites from belief in the plagues. In the wilderness, streams flowed from the rock and manna fell from the sky. The Israelites looked upon the brazen serpent and straightway believed that they were healed of the poisonous things of vipers. In national prosperity, miracles attended the successes of the Hebrews. But when they departed from the true idea, their demoralization began. Even in captivity among foreign nations, the divine principle wrought wonders for the people of God in the fiery furnace and in king's palaces. By interpreting God as a corporeal savior, but not as the saving principle or divine love, we shall continue to seek salvation through pardon and not through reform and resort to matter instead of spirit for the cure of the sick. As mortals reach through knowledge of Christian science a higher sense, they will seek to learn not from matter, but from the divine principle God, how to demonstrate the Christ, truth, as the healing and saving power. When understanding changes the standpoints of life and intelligence from a material to a spiritual basis, we shall gain the reality of life, the control of soul over sense, and we shall perceive Christianity or truth in its divine principle. This must be the climax before harmonious and immortal man is obtained in his capabilities revealed. It is highly important in view of the immense work to be accomplished before this recognition of divine science can come to turn our thoughts towards divine principle that in that finite belief may be prepared to relinquish its error. 
divine mind rightly demands man's entire obedience, affection, and strength. No reservation is made for any lesser loyalty. Obedience to truth gives man power and strength. Submission to error superinduces loss of power. Truth casts out all evils and materialistic methods with the actual spiritual law, the law which gives sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, voice to the dumb, speech to the lame. Advancing to a higher plane of action, thought rises from the material sense to the spiritual from the scholastic to the inspirational, and from the mortal to the immortal. All things are created spiritually. Mind, not matter, is the creator. Love, the divine principle, is the father and mother of the universe, including man. Discerning the rights of man, we cannot fail to foresee the doom of all oppression. Slavery is not the legitimate state of man. God made man free. Paul said, I was free born. All men should be free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Love and truth make free, but evil and error lead into captivity. Christian science raises the standard of liberty and cries, Follow me, escape from the bondage of sickness, sin, and death. Jesus marked out the way. Citizens of the world, accept the glorious liberty of the children of God, and be free. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 33. Call the Lord thy sure salvation. Rest beneath the almighty shade. In his secret habitation dwell, nor ever be dismayed. Hymn number 33.
every now and then, someone from our online community will call in and request something. They'll feel inspired and we hear about it. So I thought I'd oblige this morning. Let us sing hymn number 153. In thee, my God and Savior, forevermore the same, my spirit hath rejoicing, for holy is thy name. My soul doth magnify the Lord, sing all in glad accord. Praise him who lifts the lowly, for faithful is his word. I magnify and bless thee, for faithful is thy word. Hymn number 153.
read from the Christian Science textbook, the Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us, upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Amen.